everyday moments in history. A Roman soldier prepares dinner. When discussing the Roman army, we almost exclusively do so from a military perspective. All too often, we armchair generals concern ourselves simply with strategy and tactics, where thousands of human lives are reduced to blocks on a map. Here, the Roman soldier is nothing more than a faceless clone, whose sole purpose is to do battle. This is history without the humanity. Today, we will throw off such myopic conventions, and join a legionnaire not in combat, but for dinner. The need to feed. As Napoleon famously said, an army marches on its stomach. This was even more true prior to the adoption of gunpowder, when men and beasts powered our weapons. In this era, it is estimated that approximately 90% of the weight of the supplies required by an ancient army revolved around eating. In terms of the average Roman soldier, it is estimated that they had a recommended daily allowance of around 3,000 calories. The minimum daily requirement was far lower, as fat reserves could help provide energy when consumption was low. However, prolonged malnutrition over several days would substantially reduce a legionnaire's physical and mental abilities. A well-performing army was, therefore, a well-fed army. We will now look at the ways a legion was fed. These broadly fall into the categories of ration and non-ration sources. Ration Sources of Supply Rations were the food supplies issued to soldiers on a regular basis, according to their rank and status. While conveniently procured for the individual, these were not entirely free, since the cost of most items was deducted from the soldier's pay. Evidence suggests that the rations themselves were regularized. This was militarily advantageous, because it allowed for the development of a highly organized and efficient logistical system. It also ensured that there was sufficient food, while limiting the risks of overeating and drinking. During the Imperial period, a soldier's rations were made up of around 75% grain and 25% non-grain foodstuffs by weight. The latter consisted of meat, vegetables, cheese, olive oil, wine, and salt. The grain ration provided the carbohydrates and calories of one's diet. It was typically distributed as wheat, though barley might be issued as punishment, or if supplies were low. The rest of the rations made sure that protein, vitamins, and other vital nutrients were included. The type of meat depended on local availability, but generally consisted of pork, beef, and mutton. Vegetables also varied by region. In many cases, we see references to beans, lentils, and peas, alongside herbs such as garlic. Cheese could be made from cow, sheep, or goat's milk. It was both light and easy to transport. Olive oil was also important, both as a condiment and a cooking supply. Other liquids, such as wine, could help provide not only nutrition, but also water content. It was distributed as both vintage wine and sour wine for consumption. Lastly, salt was included to preserve food, season dishes, and serve medical purposes. It was considered one of the absolute necessities when provisioning an army. Non-ration sources of supply while rations provided a baseline for nutrition, the army also relied on other sources to meet its daily needs. These ranged from absolute necessities to luxuries. On campaign, the Legion obtained these supplies using three means of collection. Foraging, requisition, and pillaging. Foraging involved sending out soldiers to retrieve specific items. Of utmost importance would be sending aquatores to nearby springs, rivers, lakes, and wells, from which they would return to camp with full leather bags, water skins, barrels, or vessels of water. 
Lignatores were sent to gather firewood for cooking, heating, and lighting, while Pabulatores collected fodder for the animals. These activities were daily tasks, and took many foraging parties. The expeditions of the Frumentatores, on the other hand, were carried out infrequently. They ventured out in large numbers to collect a wide range of foodstuffs, such as wheat, barley, olive oil, wine, and fruit. Roman soldiers might be tasked with reaping grain in the fields, or picking figs from orchards. Requisition involved obtaining supplies from ostensibly friendly forces. These goods were generally brought to the army through seizure, forced purchase, or private markets. A commander might issue orders for inhabitants to supply an army passing through the region. This was often done on a large scale, with villages and towns being given specific locations for deposits. Compensation could range from nothing to near market value. More often than not, such requisition was a heavy burden on the local population. By contrast, special merchants, known as suitlers, were far more eager to address the army's needs. In fact, they travelled with the legions and made a living selling them goods. It was through these suitlers that soldiers would get their gourmet items. Garum fish sauce, honey, and spices were always in high demand to improve the taste of rations, while items such as fruit, eggs, and fish were great additions to break up the monotony of military rations. Finally, pillaging involved the seizing of supplies alongside the destruction of property. Such acts typically took place after a battle or a siege, but might be ordered across enemy territory to punish them or goad them into battle. The Roman military strictly controlled these activities in order to impose discipline and better control the gathering and storage of provisions. In times of lax discipline or civil war, however, an organized force might quickly become a roving band of robbers. It was said that once a thing got lost under a legionnaire's cloak, there was no power on earth that could snatch it away. Food Preparation once supplies were collected, they were distributed to the soldiers. Some evidence suggests that rations were received on the first of the month, while non-rations were obtained on a more irregular schedule, based on demand and availability. In contrast with modern armies, which rely on central facilities, the legions at war generally prepared food at the squad level of the Contubernium, the eight-man group that shared a tent. The grain, which made up the majority of a soldier's caloric intake, could be eaten in two basic ways, as porridge or bread. The first was known as pools, and was easier to prepare. It was made by taking wheat and adding water, salt, fat, and oil or milk. For extra flavour, spices, vegetables, or fresh meat could be thrown into a brass pot alongside it, and boiled to resemble modern polenta. However, this method of preparation was less common, as it would be difficult to store and transport. Generally, soldiers ate their grain in the form of bread. This took several steps. First, the grain had to be threshed to remove the inedible husks. Threshing occurred prior to being sent to the legions, in order to reduce its total weight. If troops collected their own grain in the fields, it would be brought back into camp to be threshed within the security of the fortifications. Next, the grain would be ground into flour using a stone hand mill, or mola monaria, carried by each contubernium's pack animal. Milling could be repeated several times to improve the quality of the flour. The more coarse flour produces a black bread consumed by the rank and file, while the more refined flour produces a white bread for the officers. Next, extra ingredients were mixed into the flour, such as salt, lard, leaven, and most importantly, water. Finally, the mixture had to be kneaded and baked in a campfire or hearth. For a contubernium, it would take about an hour to mill their daily grain rations into flour, and another one to two hours to make the bread. To save time, several days' worth of material was often prepared at once. 
According to military regulations, meats of various kind were to be baked in a campfire or boiled in a cooking pot. Alongside them would be prepared fruits and vegetables, which might be roasted on a spit or eaten raw. Evidence suggests that cheese was also manufactured by the troops. Olive oil and wine, on the other hand, were obtained pre-made, though soldiers might still choose to alter them prior to consumption. Sour wine, for instance, would be watered down into posca, a popular drink among the lower classes. Along the way, soldiers would introduce special ingredients acquired from suitlers or collected in the field to improve their meals. However, preparing gourmet dishes was considered unsoldierly. Well-disciplined forces would, in fact, regulate such time-wasting activities. Exceptions, of course, existed for the officers and commanders, who enjoyed both better diets and more elaborate meals. Pre-made meals In certain instances, soldiers ate pre-made meals on campaign. This was often done for strategic reasons, when the army had to move quickly. A commander might order local populations to place prepared food along the road, as was done by Claudius Nero on his march to repulse Hasdrubal's forces in 207 BC. Alternatively, the soldiers themselves might be ordered to prepare their own meals ahead of time. This generally involved making longer-lasting foods, such as jerky and biscuits, by removing water content. The meats would be dried and salted, while the bread would be re-baked into hard tack. It should also be noted that when legions remained in place for long periods of time, their food preparation became more centralised. In these conditions, soldiers could more readily access pre-made meals from camp kitchens or local taverns and markets. Meal Time The Roman army ate two meals a day. Breakfast, or prandium, in the morning or at noon, and dinner, or cena, in the evening. The exact timing was at the discretion of the commanders and depended on how they planned to use the army. Eating might be scheduled right before battle, as a reward for strenuous activity, or in the off-shifts while constructing siege works. Breakfast was light, and generally consisted of cold meats and cheese, which were readily available. Dinner, on the other hand, was more hearty, but included many of the more time-consuming steps we have discussed. When the troops ate, they did so together. Soldiers took food with members of their contubernium, and were expected to eat standing or sitting. Officers dined with one another, and the aristocratic higher-ups would often recline, as was befitting their class. Food and drink was consumed using a legionnaire's equipment. A bronze patera served as an all-purpose cooking pot, cup, and food bowl. Solids were picked up using fingers, since the fork was unknown to the Romans. Daggers could cut bread and meat, while spoons were used to consume soups and porridge. Additional earthenware cups might also be present alongside a range of wooden utensils. Given time, the soldiers would tend to hoard additional gear. As always, it was in the interest of a disciplined force to curb such activities. In fact, the entire highly organised process of food supply, preparation and consumption was a key feature of Rome's military that is all too often overlooked. Without this engine driving the legions, they would never have achieved the levels of success that made them so famous. We hope you have enjoyed this look under the hood of the Roman war machine and appreciated sharing in the experiences which made up the everyday life of our ancestors. A huge thanks is owed to our supporters on Patreon and the many talented researchers, writers and artists who made this video possible. Please consider contributing to fund future content. If you found this topic interesting, check out these related videos about our fascinating past be sure to like and subscribe for more history and check out our description for ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching.